Welcome to the next video. Um, in our last video, we talked about um, cells and how if a stress is applied to them, they will adapt. If there's a stress that's applied that that uh, persuades or pushes the cell to perform something or to move somewhere or or whatever, if a stress is applied, um, the cell will adapt. And there's two types of adaptations. Uh, there's physiological, physiological, or there is the dreadful pathological. So the physiological is more uh, of a normal process. If let's say for example there's kind of a blood a blood vessel traveling next to this cell and there's a little hormone from the pituitary gland or or from the um, you know another hormone producing cell or gland in your body and this cell kind of comes down and then this or not the cell this uh, hormone comes out comes out and the bloodstream and it it, atta it attaches to this cell and tells this cell that hey you need to do this or that <clears throat> the cell is going to adapt to that <clears throat> and the physiological adaptation is usually refers to um, hormone or a chemical mediated um, process in your body. Pathological is kind of an abnormal process. And the question, another question is which path of adaptation will happen if a cell is stressed? H how do we know which path uh, of adaptation, kind of a more physiological or normal process or more of a pathological abnormal adaptation. Well, what's in it for the cell? If the cell is, gets injured out of the process, it's not going to be a, a physiological adaptation. It's going to be more of a pathological adaptation because the adaptation usually is to prevent cell injury. So you want to prevent cell injury. So if the cell is going to get injured, <clears throat> adaptation will happen. Usually pathological uh, adaptation will happen to prevent a cell from being, being injured. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's four types of adaptation that's usually talked about. And they are hypertrophy, they are hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, and atrophy. Now these can be pathologic or physiological, um, but these are just kind of the four main types of adaptation. So hypertrophy, what is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is if you have one cell <clears throat> of a certain size, it undergoes processes to make it bigger. That's what hypertrophy is. Taking one size or one cell of a certain size and making it bigger. How does it do that? We'll talk about that later, but usually it's just, you know, it increases its um, cellular structure, it increases its cellular components, it increases its mitochondria. <clears throat> It increases its ability to perform uh, more of the same tasks, if you will. Um, an example of that is when I was a landscaper uh, in high school. I used to uh, work on a landscaping crew for a summer, and that was a lot of hard work. And at the end of the end of the summer, my hands were all calloused. You know, so I got my little hand here. And at the end of the summer, I had big calluses on my hands from, from digging trench and using a shovel a lot. And I'm sure that my hand underwent some of this, hypertrophy. Some of my skin cells were got a lot tougher. <clears throat> okay. Now, hyperplasia. Let's talk about hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is when you have one cell, and there's a stress put upon it, of course. 
what happens? Well, in hypertrophy, it just gets bigger, right? But in hyperplasia, there's just more of them. They reproduce like mad, and they're trying to not get injured. So there, they just say, hey, I need more of me. <clears throat> so that's hyperplasia. Now, a question. How do I know whether a cell will undergo hypertrophy or hyperplasia? The answer is we have to look at the cell type. Cell type. Because the cell type usually dictates what will happen, whether it's, a, whether it's a hypertrophy example or a hyperplasia. Okay, for example, if I have this little stick guy here, or gal, and <clears throat> Let's say this individual wants to get, he's got little biceps, and he wants to get big biceps. So he'll go to the gym, and he'll start lifting weight, um, <clears throat> doing, uh, being, doing dumbbell press and, ex and exercising, and then you'll see that these muscles will start getting bigger and bigger. And then they'll start getting biceps, huge biceps maybe, even up to his chin. <laughs> but anyways, case in point is that these cell types, these muscle cell types, these muscle cells, they don't have the capacity to multiply like mad. They don't they don't they don't have that capacity. So what usually happens, I'm not going to say absolute because very little is absolute in life, but usually what happens is that the muscle cell <clears throat> is a certain size and in order to get the big biceps will undergo hypertrophy so the muscle cell will get bigger and then before you know it he'll be able to lift huge barbells okay so that is an example of hypertrophy now if I'm a skin cell and I having some uh, my skin needs to become more tougher um, <clears throat> more tougher, I don't know if that's a word, but more tough, I guess, then they might undergo hyperplasia because a, a skin cell has the capacity to multiply definitely more rapidly than a muscle cell. 